Should I do the <coughs> push button man? Or? Um, well, I can watch that. I will get to you. So, hi, uh, those who don't know me, I'm okay. Morton. Uh, I work for Arm. So, we had an interesting discussion over dinner at uh, LCC about uh, health. So, we're continuing on the topic of health. Um, one of the problems we're seeing is that if you have periodic tasks with a very long period, then because utilization of load decays over time, then even if it's a big task or it does a lot of compute every time it wakes up, because if, if it's been sleeping for too long, it appears very small when it wakes back up and we choose to too low OPP and it has to ramp up again. So we're sort of reacting too late every time the task wakes up. And um, we discussed that with Paul Turner and uh, he proposed that we basically uh, try to clamp the, um, the decay time, so basically ignore sleep beyond a certain threshold. So any task that would sleep for a very long time, we just make them look like if they were periodic with a shorter period to try to retain some of the, uh, the utilization. Um, some of the history. Yeah, basically make sure that the history doesn't go away uh, every time you sleep. So um, we, we prototype that. Try to go to the next slide. So um, I have, well, Patrick did some very nice um, um, Python that can actually simulate health. So this is, just a, this is just a model. And we did some examples. And this is a 16 millisecond periodic task. And it runs for 8 milliseconds each time. So this is how it would normally behave. Um, so you see in the beginning it will ramp up and then it will stabilize within these two boundaries. And you can actually compute what are the, uh, the, the, uh, the boundaries of where the health signal is. Um, so this task is not too bad. Um, but because the period is so short, the, um, the clamping doesn't really have any effect on this one. Try to go to the next slide. I think we have one with 32 millisecond clamping, which is quite tight. It makes no difference because this task is only sleeping 8 milliseconds at a time. But at the next one, you can see what happens if you apply four millisecond clamping, which is way too tight, in my opinion, because the scale latency we have today is in the order of what, somewhere between 12, 16 to up to 30 milliseconds. So depending on the ordering of where your task is actually scheduled within each each uh, scheduling period, this might affect this um, um, the signal quite a lot. Um, so for this kind of task, I don't think it really makes sense. So I have a set of examples with uh, um, a longer running task. So this one is running every 102 milliseconds. I'm not sure why we picked 102. But um, yeah, because we use uh, the uh, minimum time, which is oh, that's, uh, that's because of the, the way the simulator is implemented. Yeah. Anyway, so this task is running 30 milliseconds every 100 milliseconds. And you can see the oscillations <laughs> we have between when the task was actually running and the value it has when it wakes back up are hugely different. So we peak at uh, 562, and when we wake back up, we might we might actually be yeah. down to 140. It does not show the unplanned signal for this task, right? Because that will slow down further. Yeah, so you can see the clamp here is, I have, I think I have the, well, I didn't include it in the slide deck. I have one which is unclamped, which would go down slightly more, but it's almost nothing because 30 milliseconds out of 102, you have 72 uh, milliseconds worth of sleep. So yes, it would decay for another tiny bit here before it wakes up, but the picture is almost the same. So, but the point is that with 64 millisecond clamping, which I think was one of the numbers we actually discussed. Yeah, we talked about 32 to 64. Yeah. yeah. So with 64, there's almost no difference. You see 560 versus 140 is that that's almost, well, it's 3, 4x, which means that we, if we use that utilization <laughs> value at a wake up, if we would choose an OPP, which is way too low. So we need something which is better at retaining some, some average value. So if you go to the next one, that's 32. So here you can clearly see the clamping, but the variation is still quite quite big. I mean, the peaks go up a little bit. That's another effect of the clamping, of course. 
So now we're up to 660 at the peaks. And at wake up, we're at 325. So we would still choose an OPP, which is, or well, the utilization is still half when we wake up compared to the max, mm -hmm. which might still not be, be quite what we want. I mean, if you really want the system to be responsive when your task wakes up after a long sleep, we don't want to start too low. So actually, to get something which is even tighter, I think I have 16 milliseconds as well. Yeah, well, that's the average also. That is, uh, this is the theoretical average for this signal. So like 30% utilization, and this is the new average for the clumpet signal, which is almost up. Yeah. You have the clamp at the top end as well to push it down again, but that gets hard. Yeah, and the other thing, which I think we discussed last week was what is really the, uh, the <coughs> utilization of, of, of a task? I mean, by definition, it's a, it's a ratio of busy time versus uh, or over the period. But in real life, if, you, if your period is too long, I mean, if in theory you should do it over an infinite period of time or if, well, at least a period of your task, but for, for performance reasons, that might not be that interesting that this is actually a 30% task because it runs for 30 milliseconds when it wakes up, which means that somebody is waiting for 30 milliseconds to see the response. So they might actually want to run this quite fast, which means that if we, we use this utilization, which is the true like theoretical utilization, we might not actually get what we want anyway. Um, so I don't know, it's, 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 it's a bit of a philosophical dis discussion, I think, where you, your goal is really about selecting the, uh, the uh, high enough OPP, or it's also about load balancing? So, so for new tasks, I think we assume the utilization of one, right? Then we do that or <coughs> no, we this, half of the spare capacity. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah, right. Uh, then we don't always shoot the same yeah. 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 four points. Yeah. yeah. Can we just bring the long sleeping task to? Well, that, that gets to be After, rather horrible. You know, we slept longer than X, and that was regarded as a new one. That could be one way, but then how long is, is long enough? <coughs> yeah, that's, would, that's would you that's consider it new? Right. Yeah, you probably want it to be something which is more like uh, like gradual. But so yeah, yeah. And then Paul had this sinusoid idea, but then he never did anything. He, yeah, he was he was supposed to send patches, but then he disappeared again. You know, yeah. I think we've seen that before. Yeah. But yeah, um, he, he he shared he shared a, a spreadsheet in 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 in, the, in this Google thingy, and I looked into that, and it had absolutely no comments in there. It was just a, a few formulas and stuff, and I couldn't really work out what it does. Um, so. I do have patches for this clamping thing, and I'm happy to share them. They're not too bad, I think, to implement. I think the worst implementation detail of just implementing this is that <clears throat> you can't apply clamping at your aggregate signal, the one you have at CPU level. So now you basically have, every time a task wakes up, we have to compensate for the clamping in the aggregate signal for the entire CPU. So you have basically, when a task wakes up, you have to remove the contribution of that task from the CPU, then clamp the signal, and then add it back. Because the contribution the task has on the CPU aggregate value while it sleeps will decay beyond the cap. So you sort of need to, to add the delta back when the task wakes up, and that's a bit horrible. But in terms of code, it's not too bad. But the behavior is not as for the desired. Not quite. Um, and as I told you in a, earlier today, I found another problem, and that is if you co-schedule two tasks, because we're actually expanding <laughs> proper sleep time, if you have a task waiting on the run queue, then that doesn't count as sleep time. So your clamp is less efficient if, if you have two tasks being co-scheduled. Let's imagine we had had two of these tasks, and they're both activated at the same time. Then one of them might wait for 30 milliseconds and start executing here. And that task would then go to sleep. And then after, so you have 
if this is the beginning of your period, then the first talk would run for 30 milliseconds, the next talk would run for 30 milliseconds, the first talk will already go to sleep here. And because it's clamped after 16 milliseconds, it will then sleep for 54, 50, 50, it will have 56 milliseconds removed of its sleep time. Whereas the task that started 30 milliseconds into the period, it will add up to 30 plus 30 plus 16, 76, which gives us what, 24? So that will only be, the, be clamped for, for 24 milliseconds, which means that it will actually decay more than the other, other, other task, which means that you sort of get punished for being co-scheduled with another task, which doesn't make any sense either. So I tried to hack up another patch where we actually accounted for the waiting time on the run queue, but then it becomes really horrible to implement. So I won't recommend doing that. Um, so overall, I'm not too happy with, with the clamming approach. I don't think it gave us completely what we wanted. So <coughs> I, I have a vague idea about how to uh, solve this, um, how much time to wait before declaring that the test is new is a problem because that sort of maps to the, how the all governors work, where they measure uh, idle time over full time. <laughs> uh, so you know that the, if the task waited longer than the period, sort of, then, then, it would, then you know how much it would contribute to the next one, right? And you can use this location. Yeah, I'm sort of thinking but you might just like a yeah, you might also want to relate it to your transition, I mean, OBP transition latency or the cost of, of doing OBP transitions. I don't know if you want to factor that yes, in as well. But, uh, yeah. Yeah, but I, I think that's, that, that may be easier to, you know, to actually get to work. Than yeah. Than yeah. So I think. Can't we just, I mean, um, for this this task with a long running time, it's mean that you are starting from a low value, and you will increase. Can't we just look at this um, speed of increasing as an input to say, okay, we have to speed up the to increase the OPP faster? I mean, but 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 your gradient will be the same at the beginning, independent of where the task actually stops. So if it had stopped here, the gradient at the beginning would sort of been the same. Oh, no, normally the gradients, I mean... Uh, the gradient will, will flat yeah. out the further up we go. Yeah. But if you need to make your OBP decision down here, you don't know how far up it will go. No, but I mean, um, let's say that uh, in 10 milliseconds or 20 milliseconds, you will have a good idea of the slope. So you can say, okay, if I'm running 10 milliseconds, then I'm already at uh, 600... Uh, <laughs> 600, it means that I'm a heavy task because based on the past and, and how I'm increasing my utilization right now, it means that I'm a heavy task. So you want to take into account the history further back, mm -hmm. saying that? Uh, uh, I think it's worth in taking into account the value and how it's increasing. Just because if you're starting from far, I mean, that could be a good way for, for selecting the software. <laughs> Just for selecting the I don't see how you can use the gradient because it's always the same. No matter how how far up the curve <laughs> the task will go, your, your gradient at the beginning is the same. At the beginning, yeah, but uh, in a, I mean, if it's a small task, it will be back to either quite soon. True, if it's yes. a long task, I mean, depending on what you call a long task. Yes. After that, 20 minutes ago, <laughs> you have a good idea. You can decide that it's a long, it's a Longer running task or not. Yes. It's really about uh, the discuss that at LPC using some kind of proportional integral and the derivative value just oh, to speed up the we increase. Then which, which would be your. Um, Sorry? Which, which would be you select to realize the Yeah. Would be, which one? Yeah. How can you say it's probably the same problem that we don't know that the OPT is needed by the time. I think that the idea was like at the beginning where the gradient is high, maybe you can skip three OPPs and then as they lower the gradient is you go yeah, two I mean, OPP or only one. Yeah, it, I mean in Skip Track, uh, it's a bit, you, you run to the max, 
the point would be maybe instead of running to the max to, to create some kind of feedback, con feedback control where you're increasing faster and when you see that the utilization of the CPU is stabilized, you can just go down. I mean, that's a, yeah, a control loop that. This is the factor of privilege. Yeah. So, I, I mean, it's just that right now we are we are only using the current value of utilization, but in fact, we can use how fast it decreases. You can use some kind of integral. But, but the speed of increase and decrease is the same, <coughs> always, isn't it? Depending on the current utilization, you mean? Yeah, but the accumulation of that will change if it's a small task or a long running task. That depends. I mean, if, if, if we didn't apply uh, the K-clamping here, then we would start somewhere down here, yeah. and we wouldn't see a difference uh, whether it would be a big task that just slept for no, a long I, time I, or this little time. I fully agree that at wake up, that will be exactly the same. Yeah. But once you start to run, you can easily see if it's a small <coughs> running task or Yeah, you can see task. that by looking at how far up the curve you got. But it doesn't help you making a, a decision about the OPP at the instant where you wake up. I mean, it's always easier to get an idea if you yeah. sit back and monitor the task for a while. But if you can't afford to wait 10 or 20 milliseconds to see, OK, this task actually got, got better. Yeah, but I'm afraid that what you are trying to solve is not so uh, you can't easily solve that. I mean, at the beginning, you, you can, I think you can easily solve to ramp up quickly, but um, at some time, uh, that's what was done before with the government and so on. I mean, you have to take a, a, win, a time window and decide um, yes. when you think it's a long running task and you have to increase your PP or when it's still a small stat. Okay, you must start, I, I, must start. I, I, I think there is another approach, yeah. and that's uh, the one that Patrick is going yeah. to talk about. One observation. Yeah. So, the difference between the task that was already ranked previously and a new one, I mean, an entirely new one, is yeah. that we have some information on what the already ranked task did in the past. Yes. And we could possibly use that information yeah. to get the uh, uh, right. LPP right away. Yeah, because we actually knew that when we're here, true, the utilization value is here, but actually if we had recorded some more information about where we were in the past.
seconds and nanoseconds. Oh, and yes. internally, we use microseconds. 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 But we we compute the delta in nanoseconds, and then we reduce that to so, so you microseconds. So you we ship both. You add them to the period, don't ship again, and then we roll over at, at 20 bits. That will solve that. But yeah, you're right. Yeah, so, so what I did was that I basically um, zero the uh, the nanosecond bit so i made all the times that effectively had the uh, millisecond microsecond resolution instead then uh, then some of the rounding errors go away so yeah but we can retain those 10 bits um, and roll out from 20. <coughs> fully accurate again yeah but do you need to be more accurate than microseconds because you know anyway so I think that's the last slide I have. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I tried to hook this up with, uh, with SketchUt, so just to show if it makes any difference in, in the OPP selection. And I ran with all the capping, just with, with the performance governor, just to show that this is actually, so this is the, uh, the uh, completion time of each activation using RT app. So running at the highest OPP, they're of course the same for all cases. So with using schedule so the more we clamp, the the, uh, the higher the OPP it would select because it would start at a higher point to so actually get better times. But we're still quite far away from uh, from the maximum performance, uh, even with the clamping of 16, <coughs> which I think is Great. basically too tight. Great. Um, so I don't think we're quite there. So the util S numbers, Patrick will explain now. Yeah. So, oh, yeah, that's. Oh, sorry, the that's, that's the OPP uh, distribution with the uh, with the different uh, with the different clampings. So you can see that yeah. the more you clamp, the higher OPP you will survive. Yeah. yeah. Hey, Martin. Uh, this is Vikram. It's not just a question about OPP selection, right? It's also about uh, big little placement. Yes. So I just use I just use Ketchel as a, as an easy example of showing how it actually affects things. Uh, but yeah, you're right. It also yeah, affects right. the big Okay. Okay. More questions about this? Or okay. Yeah. From that, how can you know whether you are doing good or wrong? I mean, just have sort of absolute numbers. How can you say, okay, I'm doing good or? You can't basically because <laughs> because what does it mean? I, I just made this uh, thirty percent task up that runs thirty milliseconds. I mean, for one use case it might be all right that it's running slow, but for other use cases we re we actually want to go to the max frequency immediately and, and complete it as soon as possible. So <coughs> I, I don't I don't think there is really an answer to to uh, to that question. People want different things. And they could then, if we implement the clamping, then they could mess about with, with clamping and set it to the level that they want. But it seems that those that really want high performance, just right from when the task wakes up, setting it as low as 16 milliseconds won't even take us to the highest OPP. This is the highest OPP. And this is somewhere in the middle. So we're not getting the performance. I mean, setting it down to four milliseconds or something ridiculous like that, sort of, yeah, that, I don't think that's that's the right no, way to go. Yes. So it's basically just to show that people that want really high performance, I don't think this is the solution. More questions? Well then, Pat. Yeah. So we we started already in the past. Uh, actually, before uh, Martin introduced uh, implemented the the clamping, there was another idea going around, and it was uh, uh, trying to use a little bit better the history of how the task behaved in the past. But as, a, as an introduction topic, so basically the point is that PELT by itself is a really good matrix to estimate how big a task is, how much utilization it has, but it has some hard-coded behavior. So for example, this is the same task, it's a, a fifth, I think it's a 50% task. So in this case, it's running for five milliseconds every 10, in this case, it's running for 100 milliseconds every 200 uh, milliseconds. So it's still 50%, but what 50% really means? I mean, if the task is relatively small in the period, uh, okay, you can say it's using the half of the CPU, 
But if the task uh, has a long period, there are moments in times in which the task is not really using the CPU for 50 milliseconds, it's not using the CPU, so it's like a zero task, more or less. While there are other moments in time where the task is really using for 50 milliseconds consecutively the CPU, so it's more like a big task. Right, so depending on the period, the, the nature of the task can be really, really be different. And PELT is, uh, is tracking task using a constant, which is this 32 milliseconds. So it's kind of, if you have tasks that run with a period of 32 milliseconds, it's describing pretty well uh, how much CPU the task is, uh, so is using. CFS has a similar problem as to what constitutes fairness. Yeah. If you have a 50% task and you add a hundred percent task in, in weight. Um, the fifty percent task will effectively get one third of the CPU, but not one half. Yeah. Um, is that fair? Um, so it cheats a little bit there. Yeah. Uh, and it does this on the thirty-two window. Yeah. Um, so it's a similar problem. But well, at the end, it makes sense. You have to define a, a window of interest, and then you try to set up your heuristics and metrics to be working properly within this window of interest. So, for example, I, I guess in Android, where we have 60 millisecond windows where we have to render frames, something around this uh, value is probably reasonable to define how big a task is, because we know that we have to do a certain amount of work every 60 milliseconds. Uh, but one of the kind of big issue is that it, it tried to consolidate past information because we have the decay load, the blocked load, and whatever, but it's not really uh, up to the job in order to keeping history, so consolidating what really was the behavior of the task uh, in, uh, in the past. And another issue is that it's kind of slow, so in this situation it takes time to go up and there are all the things that we discussed before with, uh, with the ensemble. So the, the idea is uh, looking at the problem from another perspective is that at the end uh, we, we want to solve uh, two main issues, which are task placement and OBP selections. This is what we are really after. And we are trying to fix or modify PELT in such a way that they can be useful for task placement and OBP <coughs> selection. Maybe we can try to use a different approach, which is, okay, we still keep PELT as a, a, an estimator. So it's just something that while the task is running, it updates its metrics, it's trying to figure out how big is this task during this activation. So the task start to run for a period of time, it stop, okay, this last activation, the task was such big, okay? And then we can try to put on top of PELT, so something that collect the PELT estimator and aggregate this value. So try to keep track of a little bit of history of the previous activation. So we have an information, of, okay, when the task start, it will likely use so much CPU. So you put a low pass filter on the maximum value of Fundamentally, yes, kind, kind of, yeah, exactly. Uh, but that can be, I mean, it opens a space where we can put uh, heuristics on top of how we tune this robust feature. So we keep track of what we learned and we generate a new signal. So we don't have to fix PELT. PELT is good for what it has to do. It estimates the signal. We just tune 32 milliseconds, 16, whatever we want for the constant. It gives us a measure for a task every time it, it runs. There is an activation, and then we build on top of these uh, samples. And, and we try to build something which is really low overhead. Uh, why? Because we target only what we really need to optimize. So we need to optimize task placements and OPP uh, selection. So for task placement, we need basically to look at scheduling the entities that are task. Okay, we don't care about task groups or whatever. There is a task, we need to know how much big is this task because we have to allocate on CPU 1 or CPU 2, right? Little or big. For CPUs, we don't care about groups or whatever, we care about the top level rank queue, okay? And at this level, we want to aggregate information, right? So the patch at the end, uh, it's pretty simple, it's a few lines of code, and what we do is, uh, let's start from the, from the bottom. For tasks, we just have a little bit of code at the queue time. When the task is the queue, and if it's asleep, then in this case, we get whatever is the utilization reported by PELT, and we aggregate this within uh, uh, we track what is the last value, and we track also we update an uh, exponential weight and moving average for so something that uh, keep an history which is more than one uh, activation. So we just update these two values at the queue time. While for the for the rank queues, what we do, there is something at the queue time. So basically at the queue time, we update what was the last estimated utilization of a CPU, which is basically what is uh, the estimated utilization of the CPU minus the estimated utilization of the task that is going to sleep. So it's kind of similar to load in the sense that we remove a fixed amount of uh, 
uh, load when the tasks go to sleep. In this case, we remove a fixed amount of estimated utilization, which was whatever the task has, has been estimated to be when it waked up the last time for the last activation. This is done in the queue. In a, at, a, at wake up time for the task, we pick whatever was the estimated utilization for this task. And this matrix can be uh, defined. It can be the last activation, can be the moving average or whatever. We pick this value and we add it to the estimated utilization of this, uh, uh, of this CPU. Why do you use task run QP for this? Sorry? At this point, task run QP should be run Q. What is it? Sorry, here. So in NQ and in DQ, we have a run Q argument. And yes, you are using task run QP, which should be run Q. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, because no, that's a, that's in queue. So the CPU uh, is not the run queue already defined at that point because we already gone through the uh, select nest task run queue phase. Okay. At this point, it should be. It should be already the same. Yeah. Because yeah, we can use. You can have NQ or DQ or task if you're not on that run queue. Already. Yeah, 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 yeah. It can be. Yeah, it can be replaced, but it should be the same. Yeah. So yeah, it's it's a fast call. We never we never push the patch outside. We have them available. We are considering to push them, but I mean, yeah, it can be refined. Uh, and then what we have is a, a set of getter methods. So these task utilized or CPU utilized that internally can use whatever aggregated value we have. So for example, for a task, the utilization S can be the maximum between the actual pelt value or the moving average or the last <laughs> sample, which is quite similar to what Volt was doing in the past. So we, we kept always the maximum between whatever is uh, utilized right now or uh, the aggregated value. For the CPU, is always the max between average and last. We don't really have the, the moving average So uh, for, for CPUs. So why do you have this moving average? It was trying to, I mean, uh, yeah, uh, the initial implementation was just with last. The idea is that we, to show that we can try to build uh, more raffinate uh, or evolved heuristics on top of these uh, getter functions. It's just an example, maybe it doesn't make sense, but basically what you get is a behavior similar to this one, where let's say that, that uh, in this case is a ramp task, so it's changing these, uh, the utilization actually over time. The, the orange is the util average, so it's basically paired that is going up and down. And this is the utilized for, uh, for this task. So maybe at the beginning we are picking the max between these two signals, and this is the utilized. And then when the task change behavior, we just have a phase in time in which we follow the task, and then we stabilize to this new region. And so even if path is oscillating up and down, the estimated utilization for this task every time it wakes up is that one. So we know that it's a task that requires this amount of CPU bandwidth and not uh, something which is changing while the task is running. So it's following it uh, that way. And there are other examples, like uh, we have a set of synthetic tests that try to, yeah, they're pretty simple, but they try to stress corner case like, okay, you have a, if I have two tasks for scheduled, how the utilization estimated change and basically how these values are, are aggregated. And there are a couple of notebooks here that shows what happening with or without the, uh, the utilized uh, working on top. And uh, so, yeah, and then the idea is that we can try to, if we have these getter methods, we can try to build on top and so we can have for example, per task boost policy. So for example, if a task is a kind of a boosted task, whatever we define to be a boosted task, so it's a task that is important in the system, then the getter method, so the task uh, uh, util uh, est for this task can return actually the max between the average and the last. While if it's a background task, we can always start from the decay value and pick a load average and ramp up slowly for that specific task. Uh, we can experiment with other uh, tracking metrics. So, for example, instead of always tracking the maximum and aggregate this one, maybe we can just try to use the max between the mean and max value of PET because PET is still oscillating for a long period of time. Maybe we can try to aggregate something which is in the average. Maybe it can be useful to solve some of the issues that we was describing before, like the stale blocked utilization for tasks and run queue especially, right? So we have to update them. We have to go through all the C groups and whatever. Maybe inside this uh, uh, CPU util has that we can look off. If the CPU is a, is a kind of a, like a idle at this point, we can just try to figure out this an average value between the maximum decay or, or the non decay, depending on if there are boosted tasks or not waiting to be waken up on that CPU. So it's possible to build more heuristics that are specifically designed for this to work. How big is a task and how much utilization is on a CPU? 
And uh, yeah, I think that's more or less overall for the idea. The patches are really quite simple. There are two or three patches, maybe there are error, whatever. But I think that the intention is to push them on the list for a review and try to run. Uh, when uh, Paul uh, proposed the, uh, the decay cap capping, uh, I think that there was a, a really simple implementation of this one, which was tracking only the max in the load balancing part, not in the backup part. This is just an extension that uses it on the backup part also and add this, uh, this average. The complaint from Paul, if I remember correctly, was that with this kind of approach, we potentially, let's say that we track the last, we tend to <coughs> overestimate how big a task is, right? Because, for example, we are tracking the previous uh, activation of a task. Quite significantly so. So for task placement, that is not. But it's true that, for example, if this is a 50% task, which run for 30 milliseconds, it's big. I mean, for Android, a 30 millisecond task running always, it's a big task. So, and we pick not even the highest OPP, or we are still close, close, but not there to the highest OPP. So really, it's a relative definition. And in any way, it's still a completely, uh, Tracking whatever path says, it's not shifting path like the gate up in the distance of drifting it depending on the value. Sure. So, yeah, that's more or less the proposal. I think that the number that Martin shows before, this is actually using UTLS, and that's the mean completion time for an activation of RT app, which is periodic with a certain configuration. I don't remember. But I mean, we are not yet to the highest OPP, but every time this app starts, we can pick or lady the, the, the correct OPP. And why do you have such difference between mean, so just to be sure, mean and max is the minimum uh, time to complete the yeah. running period? Why do you have such variation between mean and max? Because probably we are not always speaking the same OPP. Okay. But let's say that in average we are quite closer to the optimal OPP, which is for as fast as you can with respect to the other one that are still a little bit slower. <laughs> So, question? So, yeah, so, um, the two questions. One, we did some experiments with this last year on that, yep. right? We were finding that it wasn't really helping with some of the late season stability. Yep. So, I think that the most interesting usage for this kind of uh, support is when you have tasks that sleep for a long time, okay? They, they wake up and we have completely lost because of the decay path value. How big is this task? Uh, and I think that this was not the case of use cases that we was evaluating. Where in Android, you always have tasks that run for 60 milliseconds. They always wake up every 60 millisecond path is basically describing the tasks that way. So it's perfectly good enough. You don't have to estimate so much. So the, it was not producing any difference, let's say. It was not introducing overhead. It was not giving benefits. So the benefits is really for when you have a task behaving so well last year. Sorry? Help wasn't looking like that. Yeah, and Pelt also was a little bit, uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah, it was not on that. Yeah. So, this oh, so the other half of the question was, and, and so if you run some of these workloads and compare it to Walt, are you now kind of equivalent to Walt's behavior? Well, yeah, we didn't compare it to Walt, UTLS, so far. Uh, I think that more or less we are trying to introduce some of the features that Walt has. So the window is already there in PEL. We have 32 milliseconds to estimate things. What we do is just aggregate things like Walt was doing for every activation of a task, well, every window in the case of Walt. In this case, is based on activations of tasks, so from when it starts to when it sleep, and just store this value and, uh, and track it uh, in that way, in such a way that if the behavior are changing. So here you can notice that if the task after the next activation is going down, we, we go down with the with the estimation, so we adapt also going down. Uh, so, so yeah, it has to be. I don't expect yeah. big uh, advantages for uh, streaming workloads that we have in Android, probably because they are really frequent activations. But if you have a task that maybe is lived for 100 milliseconds and then it wake up and it is like a 80 percent task, then in this case we can start already from that 80 percent capacity OBP and go straight with that weather. Okay, so this seems to be interesting to solve this uh, periodic task. But if you have some increase, like uh, in your top right, I mean, you can't, yeah, you still have the, this issue when, it's in, when the load of your task is increasing, it's no more periodic. So your UTLS will be, will have to raise and we are back to the yeah. responsiveness are, of. Uh, you are basically following, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
So I, I think that can be useful when, in general, you have kind of yeah. periodic workloads, but they are burst, uh, bursty workloads. So they sleep for a long time, then it wake up, and it does something in the periodic phase for a yeah. certain amount of time. Right. Then it sleep right. again. So for these workloads, you you are better placed on figuring yeah. out where to place the chances. Yeah. I think it'd be interesting to see uh, Jank Bench for um, these proposals yeah. as well. Yeah, I think that uh, when we post the, I mean, it was a, a bit on a rush to post these things, but we will introduce number using uh, yeah, the benchmarks. Yeah, we will produce some numbers. For uh, if you're looking for a good periodic one, I think uh, PC Mark photo editing is probably the best one for a nice periodic load that's actually you know closer to something that's real world. Okay. Okay. PC yeah. Okay. Yes. Done. Lunch time. Yes. Yeah, lunch. Yeah. Uh, so we meet here again at uh, two thirty for the afternoon session. Okay. Thank you.